Welcome to another episode of Mountaineer Kingdom Do Talk, real men, manly talk. Uh, completely changed what we were just about to talk about with some uh, some new, new some news that came out of the news. Uh, today I got with Jared. Uh, with me today is Jared and Nick. Completely messed that up. That's okay. Um, At least we're not doing it live. We'll we're do it not, live. We'll do the other one live. Um, a couple of things we wanted to talk about completely got changed out to President Joe Biden has stepped out of this race. Yes. What's your initial thoughts? Not shocked at all. I expected it a while ago. I figured that the the COVID, him, him just mysteriously coming down with COVID shortly after the assassination attempt on, on, on uh, former President Trump, I, I expected that they were going to use this as a as a way of yeah. getting him out of the race. The second they said COVID, I was like, oh, here we go. They're going to kill him. Yep. Um, They're going to Hillary Clinton. I didn't think that. Well, I, I did. thought. Well, I didn't think they were going to kill him, but like, <laughs> but no, I, I figured that was going to be the end of end of his race. Yeah. Was was then. I thought that that was going to be their at like, oh, he's getting really sick or something like that. Um, well, you know, you know, you're bad when you're a Democrat and all the media is turned against you. Yeah, because they're going to start losing profits for covering, having playing a cover up for these past four years. So I think this gives some more credence that needs to be discovered or needs to be investigated about. Even back in the Republican primary, when DeSantis was debating Gavin Newsom, and he's like, hey, um, Joe Biden's not going to be the one on the ticket by the end of the year. I mean, Republicans have been saying this for years that Joe Biden will not be able to make it to re-election, and here he has it. So what do you say to the people, the conspiracy theorists who've been claiming that? Does this vindic- validate what they've been saying? I don't think there's any conspiracy there. I just think the the Joe Biden that's in office now is not the Joe Biden that was a senator and even vice president. But even, but even while, he's, while he was VP... I think his mental health really was was taking some pretty major mm-hmm. major hits because the Obama administration kept him pretty well, figuratively speaking, locked in a closet somewhere. Um, so he couldn't but, touch little people. <laughs> wasn't going with that at all. But um, I'll say it. But Joe Biden as a whole, and I know there's a lot of hardcore conservatives that will absolutely call me an idiot. But that's fine. Uh, deep down, he loved this country and uh what he's turned into in the last four years i don't think it's it's not him it's it every ounce of everything that he does is demen- is, is showing dementia it's showing alzheimer's i mean my grandmother had it and it's the same symptoms so you're not saying that he loves the country now you're saying he used to love the country but everything's being twisted because of his health of, issues of his health issues and i, I think he's still if if he could if he could talk in with what is actually going through his mind, and, and that, that's it's, it's assume he's not going through the the mental health issues that he's dealing with now don't exist. the The conversations that would come out of him would be much more pro American than what we've got out of him now, and you hear little bits of it when he starts. Because I mean, a dementia you you have moments of where you're in your right mind. And when he gets those flashes, you see the Joe Biden that was somebody that was pretty pro-American. He was more of like a, I I wouldn't go as far as saying he was a Kennedy Democrat, but he was definitely a lot more conservative. See, he always struck me as a in it for himself. So I go back, I think my first exposure to Biden that I can remember was when, um, It was Obama and Biden, the first campaign. What was that? Romney and Rand Paul? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. Um, And I'm watching the the vice presidential debate, and Paul Ryan would make a comment. I'm like, okay, I kind of can get on board with that. And then Joe would just laugh like a madman. And something in my spirit is like, this guy gives me the creeps. By 2008, like... He was he was starting to kind of fall off a little bit, but like those early early signs of it. And then, in full disclosure, I'm a car guy, so I mean, Joe Biden's big in the Corvettes. He did. He hit a, a box of uh, classified documents in his Corvette. 
He did. <laughs> yep. Um, wouldn't, so, be, wouldn't be a whole lot of boxes. So like it had to be a small box. I just, it's hard for me to get behind anybody or even g- give much sympathy other than health issues. Definitely dementia is a, is a terrible thing to go through. And it was sad to see the family not stepping in way sooner and doing something just from a personal level, but from yep. a political level. All of the stuff, the Ukraine, get rid of this prosecutor before you, you get a dime. That's corruption to the core. The the absolute nonsense that went on at our southern border, it's the, the only excuse you can have for that is one of two. It's either complete incompetence or you no longer you no longer put America first. Well, and I, therefore you are now a danger to our country. I think a lot of it is just his um his mental health. And uh I mean you watched the debate. Yeah, it was bad. And like I think at some point Trump was even feeling sorry for him. Because yeah. there there was a lot of there were there were several moments to where and, you know, Trump doesn't exactly hide his sarcasm. No, and, <laughs> and uh, his timing it, is almost comedic. He's it, got a comedian's timing, by oh, the way. He does. Yeah, but there were there were several times throughout the. I, I, I expected him to say something, and he didn't. And uh, the camera would flash over to him, and I, I could just kind of see in his face that he he really kind of felt sorry for for Joe being in the con- mental condition that he is because that's not the 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 rate at which he declined from 2020 to now is pretty quick it's almost like trump showed up expecting a championship box fight boxing match and got in the ring with me got in the ring with o2d2 over here (laughs) um yeah it's just it's it's mind-boggling the in this past weeks from or from him just dropping out an hour ago maybe earlier from the time i read it um to the assassination attempt last week to now the unknown is back. Like there's chaos constantly in this campaign. Because um, do you think, does any Democrat stand out to you that that could step up and take this? Well, he's already endorsed. I mean, Joe Biden himself has endorsed. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Yes. Yes. I, th- I think that gives her a leg up. I don't see it being her, though. I As a conservative, I hope it's her. Um, oh, I think I think it'll but, be yeah. But I, I I don't know that it'll be her. I'm and, and in full disclosure, I've been out of on purpose, been out of politics for mm-hmm. for a little while, and to that, I'll, I'll glance into it to see what's going on. But I'm not studying it like I used to, um, because quite honestly, there's the the division is so great now because of things to social media and all this other garbage. That um, it it's really it's it's kind of been a little bit of a turnoff because everybody instantly is a is an expert and a pundit, yeah. When they really don't know anything about it at all, and uh, and that's really kind of it's sad because there's a lot of folks out there that really do study it properly, but their voices aren't heard because you got folks that see a tweet or watch a video on Instagram and they instantly think they know the entire political system and how it works and being able to understand where trends are going with, with politics. Yeah. I do know, and I didn't realize this, but I think uh, going into this uh, democratic convention, um, I think it's going to be an open convention. I think they're going to have to pick somebody, obviously vote and a, to, and to win that, uh, someone would have to get a 1,976 more delegates. This is, is, and it's obviously it's not a public or a, a popular vote. It's just whatever delegate will will attach on. But the guys, the people running or in the running for this are Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, and I'm going to butcher this last name, so you can say it for me, Pete. Butcher Judge. Thank you. Uh, they've all been speculated as replacements. I'm going to throw one out there. Uh, the Democratic cons- or the West Virginia conservative. Um, Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin. Well, he's not a Democrat anymore. Yeah, he just switched to independent. That's right. He did switch independent. But um, I, I could see him. He wouldn't win on a national level. Hmm. He wouldn't win a nomination from a national level. I think he could, he, he could, if he were to be on a ticket, whether a Republican or a Democrat, I think nationally, 
I think he represents more of the 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 majority of real Democrats. A lot more than some of these other extremists do. No, he's not near left enough for them. Uh, he, for the he, party. For the party, no, he's not. He he's, is. He's middle of the road. He's a West Virginia Democrat, and yeah. and that means that on the majority of things, he he looks and and votes more central. Mm-hmm. And he'll play politics where he needs to, and it just drove drove my wife up the wall when she be, when he became senator, was because he had to play the game until he became more of a senior level senator. And Back then look how much when, power he had when Rockefeller was was still senator. Mm-hmm. He had to play second fiddle to him, and in the moment that he retired and Shelley Moore Capito jumped in, then he was able to the the reins were were lifted, and he was able to to be the the Joe Manchin that the majority of us in the state of West Virginia really know. And as a governor, he didn't do a bad job. Yeah. I just, it's hard for me to get on the party that is anti-life. Absolutely. Anti-family, uh, <laughs> more control. And that's, that's, is Trump the perfect candidate? I don't personally think so. I think he has been an amazing president. I think on paper, every court appointment, every policy, the the tariffs, the the tax cuts, um, was all positives from my perspective. Uh, my wages were better. Uh, my family was more secure. I felt more. And it's going to sound weird to say that in this country, but I felt more free. Although there was such chaos and attacks from the left at the top, it just felt. It, it felt like a great place to live. So, so the interesting thing about Trump is, I mean, obviously I don't know him personally, but I feel that he, he governs more conservative than what, he, what his views actually are. Mm-hmm. So not that, not that he's lying, but he's either that or that's just how far left we of a country have shifted. Because you've, if, if you go back to the mid-90s, he would have been really looked at as a Democrat, not necessarily Republican. Mm-hmm. However, you fast forward, and I, I truly believe, and there's a lot of a lot of people out there that will argue with me, but I truly believe that bef- prior to his election in 2016, that he gave his heart to the Lord. And you think that? I think that. Mm-hmm. Is he going to make mistakes? Absolutely. You sit in a conversation with any group of guys, and they're not going to talk like they do in church. And he just does it openly on a on a broader scale, but it doesn't necessarily mean that his heart's not any closer to God. See, I would push back on that. I I don't know anyone's heart; only the Lord does. I would think if that's the case, then some of the behaviors and attitudes would have changed. There would have been a softening of the personality. It has compared to what he was in the nineties. Okay. And okay. the early, Man, he must and, have been a and, trip in the nineties. In then. the early two thousands. So like if you go back and watch some of those earlier interviews of him, yeah. He, he was a trip. And in, and if you look at <laughs> if you look at the pastors that have come to the, that have open invita- had open invitations to the White House, you got people like Jensen Franklin mm-hmm. who has spent time in the White House with him. Not the typical um Graham family. Mm-hmm. But Jensen Franklin, who is a Probably one of, the, uh, as far as like tele, quote unquote televangelists or mega church pastors, the more Pentecostal of of the the, the majority of them, because his church still believes in speaking in tongues. He doesn't tell his church compared to like other ones, don't say amen to something something that's said. Don't pray for people. Don't put your hands on people. All that stuff. He doesn't say any of that. So like he spent a lot of time in the White House in Trump's White House, advising from a from a theological standpoint what to do and and where kind of things should go. I truly believe he's a baby Christian. He's not a by any stretch a mature Christian, but I I do believe he is. He is a, he is a Christian. Hmm. And, uh, and then you look at what occurred, I guess is what a week and a day ago, Saturday, last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And that was absolutely divine intervention. But if you look at his, his, um, his record, that's where I was wanting to go. His his record in as as president, he he's the only president that I think we've had 
maybe since Reagan, who actually kind of governed towards Christian values because mm-hmm. he, he did put judges, justices in place to overturn. I can agree with Wade, that. Yeah. Or Roe versus Wade. Um, he moved the, the capital in Israel from Tel Aviv to Israel, I mean, to Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of stuff that he did throughout his, his own, only in four years that pointed to a lot of things that we as Christians, we as believers agree with. A lot of Christians push back, well, his attitude and, and look what he's done with this. And he was paid off a prostitute and all the, all this other stuff. He still denies that though. Yeah. Well, whatever. So uh, you you look at him, and you look at different figures throughout biblical history. The the one person that God calls the man after His own heart, David, hooked up with with a lady while her husband was at war. At war. He's married. He's married. Has a kid with her. Then Murders and plots. Murder, yep. Plots the murder of of her husband. And does a whole slew of stuff that was by far much worse than anything Trump ever did in office or anything that Trump's ever done in his life. That we know of, Trump never plotted for somebody to be killed. I'm kidding. It's a possibility, I'm kidding. But, I'm kidding. but we, we, we don't Al know Al Baghdadi. That. Al Baghdadi. Yeah, well. That, Died like a dog. Listen, <laughs> you uh, don't even know. So the, I want to go back to uh, the assassination attempt. Where were you guys when that happened? To uh, me, I feel like this will be always like a nine eleven, like time. a nine eleven thing. Yeah. I will always remember what was going on. When yeah, that I don't. Happened. I don't think that that has the same impact on me because I've I've expected it to happen for a while. So you're, you're I, I was surprised. I was actually I was actually shocked it took took this long for somebody to have an attempt, at least an attempt. And I didn't think the first one would be as close close as it was. As it was. Now my my shock is how close the shooter got. Yeah. I mean, because you, you look at how the Secret Service is supposed to be the best of the best. Watching and the follow-up videos of some of that stuff was very sad, in my opinion. It, extremely sad. and um, Unable to holster your weapon? I, well, I find it, I, I mean, obviously the setting president would have the absolute A-team, and they should, right? Yeah. Because it's the setting president of yes, the United States. Absolutely. The candidates should have at least a the B team. And I think what ended up on well, Trump Kennedy didn't even have a team. Kennedy didn't have one. And Trump was That's a travesty by the way. Had, had, it's, it's been corrected but especially Kennedy with with the with the family history with assassinations there. And um the uh whoever was guarding Trump was like wasn't the B team, the C team, the D team, the E team or the F team. It was like the Z team. It was the diversity team. And uh it was it I'll was, say it. It was really sad that any candidate there was any any candidate is that is the, the, the front running candidate for, for president of the United States, one of them needs had, to be protected. Ne- absolutely needs to be protected and shouldn't have a shooter get that close because of a pitched roof. That wasn't even that pitched. There was a um I've seen several videos of the, the leading up to it. Um where the guy's walking around the bottom of the building looking up, you can see him. Um, there's even after that, how he gets on top with nobody seeing him when the snipers. Well, they, well, they did see him. Like there was a bunch of spectators that. Well, they, the spectators. <laughs> there's somebody here, up there. They're but like, over hey, here, the hey, sniper they're... rifle. The snipers are like, ah, there's a guy over there with a gun. I'm not. I'm not saying that. That's not a gun. It's a broom. It's a hit. It was a hit on Trump. From other than anybody other than this guy, I think it needs to be looked into because this is incompetence at its worst. It was also underfunded, um, and maybe uh, this has been reported and corrected, but they have requested extra funding and uh, Trump has, service members yes. several times, and that's been declined by the White House. Well, there, and, and they got it after that, though. There, there's several. So supposedly, there's several whistleblowers that have come out and said that that detail was underfunded and undertrained and un- under staffed um i don't think it was a conspiracy there at all i think it was a hopefully it was a, a lone wolf type well there was situation. enough incompetence to it can lead you to believe to that. not let people yeah. think yeah absolutely but no i remember i think you chatted it or posted it in our chat that this has happened and i'm thinking okay this can't 
I'm, I'm, I can't. Yeah, we were I, down. I don't think this is it. We were down at the baseball state championships, and one of the other dads, I guess his dad, was watching the rally live and called him. He was like, somebody just tried to take out Trump. And he was like, Dad, what are you talking about? You're crazy. Yeah. And then his dad called him back. He's like, I'm not kidding you. This really just happened. Check your phone. And none of us could find, yeah, like, a news posting. Like, his dad literally seen it happen live. I, uh, <laughs> I call my father-in-law because he's always, he's always been saying this is going to happen. And he's like, and as soon as I told him, he's like, ah, uh, is this a prank? I'm like, no. No. Um, and the coach, Ryan. He was coaching a game during this, has no idea what's going on whatsoever. Mm -hmm. After the game's done, I go up to him afterwards, like, hey, you need to check our chat. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, somebody tried to off Trump. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm not kidding you. He's like, you're you're silly. I was like, Ryan, look at me in my eyes. I am dead serious. Get on your phone. Get on your phone. I was like, it really happened. He wouldn't believe me. You know what's heartbreaking about that, though? (laughs) Other than it happened in the first place. Yeah. Um got some of the most courageous historical photos of American history of all time just from that. And, and I'm not saying that's a good thing. It's just no. whoever that camera guy was, phenomenal. Um, I think one of them I'm, was just a woman with a cell phone. But I'm going back and I'm... Because I'm, I don't have cable. I, I'm not buying cable. No. I stream everything. Um, I buy cable. Good, give me your login. Um, <laughs> so I'm, try- I'm watching it on YouTube or in X, formerly Twitter, and I'm trying to keep up with what's going on. And the amount of comments Visceral. that was so sad that that shooter missed was discouraging. Visceral. Are, are, you, sh- are you shocked? To that, to that extent. To that extent, yeah. yeah. I'm sad I mean, by it. I'm I'm a- I always knew, maybe that, yeah, I see what you're saying. But I always knew people didn't like the guy. But it's all these keyboard warriors that that are brave enough to say it online, but they'd never do anything. This is like, I don't agree with the left at all. I think um, Trump is, even now that Biden's out, I think he is the only Republican candidate that has proven he loves the country, he can do a good job, and he's the only one that can stand up to the radicals. Um, I would never wish that on anybody. I would never wish that on I think all of our leaders need to be prayed for daily and they need to be kept safe and protected. Yep. I think if they're doing a bad job, their vote, their constituents, their communities should vote them out. Will they? In most cases, no, because obviously we have a ton of uh, career politicians. But that level, it reminded me, we talked about it this morning, it reminded me of when the two witnesses in Revelation will be murdered and the world will celebrate and send each other gifts. Like I think we saw an example of that with this tragedy. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's sad. I mean, I, I, I did not like Obama as president. I didn't like his oh. policies. I didn't like, uh, I, des- I despised his I, policies. I, I, did, I didn't like how, how he, he did and, and got some of these things through, through office, but I would have never have celebrated an attempt on his life. No, never would have celebrated that because at the end of the day, whether you like Biden or not, until the end of his term, he is our president. Yeah. And I know there's there's some folks in our group that may uh, may take a little offense to that. But at the end of the day, he's still our president. I agree. And uh, just because I don't agree with him, that is a luxury that we have in the United States. That's a luxury that other people don't have. You know, what's what didn't really make national news here in the U.S. was the Iranian president's chopper went down, what, about a month ago? Yeah. True. And uh, that's a little conspicuous on on why the Iranian president was in a helicopter flying in poor weather conditions. Um, but But what didn't make the news was the candidate that got elected for president Mm -hmm. is, to Iran standards, a moderate Hmm. who believes and wants to build allies with the Western states. With the United States, with he wants to um, calm the the storm down between Iran and Israel, because you know Iran and Israel have a history of actually supporting each other. Yeah, back what before the the revolution, so like that didn't make any of the news that 
at least nationally, I've, I, I subscribe to The Economist, and that's how I found out about it. It wasn't because of any, th- any news source here in the U.S. saying, hey, you know, Iran's just elected a more moderate woman's rights type candidate, which, you know, in the United States, that, that can go that can go one one way too too far with some of the, some of the, the the radicalness that he's going. But considering women have zero rights at all in a country like Iran and they elected somebody that is very pro Western and wants women to actually have rights because they don't have it. Yeah, that's um, reminds me of the Sarah Huckabee gave a great speech at the RNC at the convention and she talked about how President Trump would always pull her aside when she was down, that he would encourage her and build her up because the, she was attacked. The media came after her. Not only did they come after her as a person, they came after her over her appearance. And I thought the left and the media was against that, that body shaming. And he would always tell her, pull her They're aside. They're against it when... It, it affects them. Yeah. Um, but she, he would, the President Trump would pull her aside to let her know it's like, you can get through this. You're tough, and they're only hard on you because you're good at your job. Yep. They hate you because you're so good. Um, and I said that just because I truly believe uh, President Trump loves America. I believe he. I believe he loves all people. Uh, the diversity that was shown at the Republican National Convention was incredible. The only thing I didn't like <laughs> was the uh, Indian prayer, the Sikh. I believe it's called a Sikh prayer. Yeah. Um, that was odd to me. We, that was odd. Jehovah God above all gods, the God, the true God. Uh, so that was, I mean, they really, really reached out to a diverse group. A very broad spectrum. That one, I mean, you. I didn't I didn't watch the convention. Practice your religion the way you want, but that's not the God this country. And this, uh, I, so I, I, I didn't know that. I find that a, a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of disheartening. That yeah, it's that a, was, very alarming. That was at the convention to where we were not, we were officially nominating Trump as our as our presidential candidate yeah. because of the bulk of the convention almost every person was like I thank God like, yeah. they and, were when up Jesus. Was, and when this lady was pr- praying again you have the freedom to live your life the way you want there is only one God mm-hmm. that is the Jewish God that is Jesus um, my opinion my thought, my belief. It's not, it's not an opinion. Like that's it's if, fact. Um, she's doing this prayer, and they have all the they have the cross and the American flag and like Christian images behind her. I thought that was like, what is happening? Uh, I think she went to the wrong convention. Um, yeah, but just because like here here I am. What about eight ten minutes ago talking about how much I believe that. Donald Trump had given his heart to the Lord <laughs> yeah. uh, in a, before being elected in 16 to he's got a Hindu. No, I don't know if it's a he thing. I'm sure he doesn't. He has some well, say. Well, no, no he's got a lot of say over it. He's the he's the candidate. And uh, I find that a little troubling and disheartening. I was the last night. I don't know. I know you watched it. We, I think we were watching it about the same time. We had Hulk Hogan come out in his Hulk no, the other. It was Thursday, but yeah. Yeah. Well, the last night when Trump did oh, his I thing, see. and then Kid Rock comes out and singing, and Dana White. Dana White, Dana White actually did a pretty good job. The Hogan thing it was, like, was, it was a like, spectacle. This was like redneck mania Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the Kid Rock thing, I, I, I personally like Kid Rock. I know, but it was but. a little too redneck over the top. It was what I thought was happening because when I'm watching it, <laughs> we're getting really far off field now. I know, but it's was that so the Hogan thing was they're playing the Hulk Hogan's theme, Real American, and it's just showing Trump. They didn't, I didn't see Hulk come out at all on whatever I was watching, and it was uh, just showing him like, no, that's cool. They're because Trump's the Real American, um, regardless. Because I got apparently I gotten some oh, yeah. questions and feedback saying I'm. Uh, so we're always we're at the end of every episode we always bring up our website which is mkdotalk.com. We always tell you to reach out at our email. MK, leave a comment. Leave a comment, stuff like that. mkdotalk at gmail.com. Easiest way to get a hold of us, it goes straight to him. It goes straight to him. Bam. Um, more recently, uh, a lot of our shorts, man, some of our shorts garner a lot of feedback. 
Uh, well, evidently one of our shorts here recently, uh, old Goober over here, really stirred the turd. Uh, uh, it was an accident. <laughs> uh, go ahead, sorry. What, was what you said an accident, or was the well, stirring the pot? No, I don't the think accident. it was. It wasn't what he said. It was. I mean, it was. It was true. Uh, I will say this. I think our stance here. And we just said what, where we stand. It's very obvious where we stand here at Mountaineer Kingdom Dude Talk. We are a conservative, Christian-valued enterprise. Mm-hmm. We, we we believe in God. We we pray for each other. We, we pray for our viewers. We, we want America to do great. And at the end of the day, who do you think we're going to vote for? Uh, it's not going to be Sleepy Joe or... Well, it's definitely going to be Sleepy Joe. Definitely not going to be Sleepy Joe. No, it's not going to be Kamala Harris. It's not going to be somebody on the left that's going to murder babies and things yeah. of that nature. We're, obviously, we're going to be voting for Trump. It's, so the, the short... We're, we're voting for Trump. The short was... Because um, there was a lot of comments lot, on like, the short. Like that was probably the most common short that I think we've ever had. And it was one of the shortest ones. So my comment was... Uh, it was me and Andy. And <laughs> during the debate, Biden was non existent, which has led to him stepping, dropping out of this race. Uh, and Trump, I said Trump wasn't truthful. Okay. What I meant by that to clarify now, because apparently that got, I think it got taken the wrong way. Then what Maybe I, you should look at the camera when what you're I saying meant. that. Nah. Okay. Uh, it's that camera right there. <laughs> that camera right there. So what I <laughs> meant by that was. Trump exaggerates, right? Embellishes. He, he embellishes. He he's a brand of. He, he's been a CEO, a very successful businessman. He's a great story for decades. I think where he excels is he has a theme that he or a point he wants to get across. And by the time he's done, you've he's landed the point. He exaggerates or embellishes some of those details. And I think it leads him open to a, unnecessary attacks. So when we, when not we, but when there's fact checkers out there and Trump claims to have the greatest economy of all time, we had an amazing, an amazing oh, economy. Sucker was running on eight cylinders. Under Trump. Yep. It wasn't the greatest of all time. What? Which decade had the greatest? Um, if I remember correctly, it was FDR. No. Because what was a the GDP had a steady so, growth of ten so percent. Here, here's the problem with GDP: is you're, um, you're about to get instantly fact checked by our resident. Well, so. but, no, so, no, but no. My so, point no, is, <laughs> but here, here's the problem. Here, here's the problem with GDP: <laughs> is if you look at China, China, China's had and actually they've had really one of their worst quarters in recent history within the last like ten years of uh, minus COVID. At only having a five point three percent GDP growth, mm-hmm. if you look at a strong, uh, our strong economy is a two to three percent GDP growth, because we're a mature economy. It takes a lot more to move that needle mm-hmm. than it does a uh, an emerging economy such as su- such as China. So yeah, when, they're they're still fairly new. So I when mean. when FDR was president we were coming out of the depression into world war ii and then really into uh you you look at the economy under under eisenhower was probably doing even better Mm -hmm. so the gdp was through the roof i know in our chat it kind of came out about uh reagan had like a what a five percent growth or something like that gdp Mm -hmm. growth which is easier to achieve with the with the economic levels that we had at the time Mm mm-hmm now, if we get a two to three percent growth in GDP, that's a strong economy. That's probably among some of the strongest when you look at the the actual growth. The problem that we have to look at is what was the deficit at the time? Sure. Where was the debt? And I think that's where we we kind of have to call out Trump in, in that yeah the debt was starting to he says started go started to go down. But you look at all the numbers, the debt continued to really increase. Yeah. And I think where well, when he, hasn't it, when hasn't it lately it, increased? Right, but I think where where he was incorrect was saying that if they would have continued on their path, they would have paid the debt down, and and I, I think he even said we'd have had it paid off, which is not possible. Well, not anytime soon. No. So, but it's it, it's comments like that that we had the safest border ever. We had a very, very, very successful and strong border, and what wasn't the safest? But what Biden. <laughs> The Biden administration did uh, was a disgrace. 
it was an absolute disgrace. The only thing that even slowed that down was him turning back to the policies that he washed away with a pen on day one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, the the comments about I, I guess so. I made the comment, and Sorry. I and I didn't give a <laughs> I did I didn't give an example. I and, think that was a mistake. And then you made a short out of it. <laughs> There was sh- <laughs> the, so the shorts when we put them into the system and they we get them. Um, that was one of the shorts. So I downloaded it, clicked it. Um, Didn't think twice about I it. I think I edited out me stuttering once. So I'm like, okay, we can get rid of the stutter and just make the statement and threw it out there. And it, it only got a few views at first. And then the next thing I know, there's like 50 comments. We hate people like you. How dare you call the president a liar? I love President Trump. I Again, I said it earlier, I think he is the only man for the job right now that can stand up against to the radical left and handle it, especially with all the impeachments, all of the, oh, the, yeah. the trials and tribulations his, ministry, his administration went under. Before, the day he announced the left was done with him. I think he is an amazing president. Um, it's just some of those unforced errors bother me. One, the debates are, they're really not going to change anyone's mind unless you see what happened in the last one, like Biden just, just, it was really exposed. Um, that, so that was what I meant by my comment and that was my meaning. Um, and there were some people that were pretty upset about that and that wasn't the intent. It was just it was just a discouraging debate to watch. And and I and I'll bring this point up too. Here on this platform, we're always going to bring up if if you're right, you're right, and we'll let you know you're right. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. It's like Shapiro's good Trump, bad Trump thing. Yeah, yeah. we're we're gonna let you we're gonna let you know one way or the other. But either, well, I, th- I think uh, we're always going to use this platform to bring out the truth. But at the we, end we, of the, vote, we vote okay. Jesus. Yes, that's what. Yes. At the end of the day. I'm I'm a Christian first. Mm-hmm. I am team Jesus first. Yep, that's where we stand. Um and then I'm going to side with the candidate that most reflects that kingdom principles. And you can disagree and you can call Trump uh whatever you want to call him. I don't happen to agree with that. I think he represents more biblical standards by far than anyone on the left. So whoever this new candidate is going to be, um, we need President Trump in there to slow down their radical ideas. And that's my final Absolutely. Thought.